Hi guys, good morning. So welcome to Networking, and uh, today is a introduction session for uh, Palo Alto Weekend Back. So Shagun, over to you. You can start with the introduction and uh, the curriculum of uh, this Palo Alto course. Yeah. Uh, before starting, just let me know. Uh, are we waiting for any more candidates? And uh, it's okay. It's okay. I'm saying uh, most of the people are joining. A couple of people are joining in a couple of seconds. Okay, okay, fine. So, hello everyone. My name is Shagun, and uh, um, this webinar sort of stuff is uh, regarding your Palo Alto Networks training. So, I believe uh, most of you have heard that um, this uh, vendor as a Palo Alto. So, they are one of the market leaders in the cyber security, and they run basically their uh, services in three main domain. One is called your startup, and uh, that is all about your firewall security. So um, what is a firewall and all, so that, that's what we will be covering in start of thing. Another two domains are, uh, one is called Cortex. It is cloud security. And um, last one is called uh, A-Focus. So A-Focus, it, it is a, again, AI-based uh, cybersecurity uh, solutions. So there we also come up with the threat hunting and all that. But we will be mainly focused on the Strata thing. So it's all about your Palo Alto firewalls. So just like routers and switches, we do have many, um, you know, multiple series of this hardware architecture and software series are also available. So this firewall will be um, Palo Alto firewall. This is called, these are classified as uh, next generation firewalls. And uh, can anyone uh, just let me idea, have the idea? if they know about like, uh, what do we mean by this next generation firewall and uh, how they are different than non next generation firewall, just to uh, make some, you know, uh, interaction with all, all of you. Anyone has some idea? Works on layer seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, exactly right. So uh, deep when- packet, we talk Deep packet inspection. Yes, yes, very, very right. So DPI or deep packet inspection or layer seven inspection. So this is one of the most um, important feature of the next generation firewalls. Palo Alto is one of the vendor actually. They uh, they are having these features added into their firewalls. We do have Cisco also. Cisco, they have ASA firewall that's also called next generation firewall. So DPI and AI based learning that is called a centralized system. So um, yeah. Hello, Mrityu Jain. Uh, yeah, good morning. So, yeah, so these uh, things are like, uh, for example, um, next I have a doubt on ASA. Okay. <laughs> ASA, uh, we will be dealing with Palo Alto actually. ASA, just I'm giving as the example over here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, for example, let's. Um, uh, just a brief introduction of uh, what we will be doing in the whole training. Uh, we will be covering, first of all, um, first of all, what is firewall itself, right? And uh, roots of the firewall, why we do have firewall, and uh, what are the stuffs that other cannot, other devices cannot do that, can, that is only and only dependent on your firewall. Second thing is uh, definitely I would love to go for some comparison stuff like what are the various leaders in the market who are having the firewall. Out of them, we will be going for a sort of comparison. Okay, this is the next generation firewall and this is non-next generation firewall. When we say next generation firewall, we do have some specific features over there. So I'm going to give you some scenario. You can identify just a real life example. For example, somebody is, uh, you know, land side, uh, you are the network admin of the firewall and one of your user or some specific users from your LAN, you don't want, they simply access, they can Google anything, they can type anything, uh, they, you know, they can search anything. But the moment they are clicking on Google Maps, it should be restricted. So none of them should be having the access to Google Maps not even through search. And uh, Amit, I'm not sharing my screen at the moment, so don't worry. Yeah, so this um, Google Maps should not be accessible to any LAN user, right? So 
what do we think in non next generation firewall the difference is whole google would be blocked i mean nothing you won't be able to search anything also so next generation firewall says okay because it is it will be depending upon your further application id there are some special urls for example facebook this google these are not just the urls they're not just the websites they are called application identification based urls because they follow further app ids app id means application identification for example you have google meet you have google documents google sheets similar you have facebook marketplace you have facebook chat so many things so single url can lead you to many other further applications also so in next generation firewall we are saying further those applications this is what we are trying to say these should be inaccessible to user rather than going to the whole uh, access of the whole uh, google domain so if you really want to share my screen uh, just for the uh, depicting those examples i can go for it it's okay let me just share my screen Okay, so let's say I'm going to draw some scenarios for you over here. Uh, this is my Palo Alto firewall. Okay, and over here I do have a connection. This side is my LAN. This side is my ISP facing interface. My screen is visible to all of you, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. So let's say in the LAN side, for the time being, I'm just going to have a single user. You can assume there are multiple users also. So I have this LAN user over here. This is my Palo Alto firewall. Let me just name them. Let's say we are using VM based firewall. So it will be called as PA VM, let's say 100. We will cover these all names, notations. What do we mean by VM 100? Do we have any other stuff like VM 50 is also there, VM 200 is also there. So we'll cover these names also during the training. So this is a VMware based firewall. So you will be having the template. You will have to deploy this firewall. This is one way. I mean, I'm not saying like this will be the only way. This is one way how you use a VMware based firewall. You just simply need a sort of a template for that. Then you deploy them. Similarly, you will be having the template for your window machine. Let's say this is window 11. So we will be using accordingly. So next thing is, let's say VM based firewall or any Palo Alto firewall, we say them, these are called your zone based firewall. Okay, so any, any idea, what do we mean by zone based or uh, let's say other firewalls do we have, they are called route based firewalls. The difference between these terminology is, uh, and one more thing is, whenever we will be going through the whole course, you will be coming across a number of new terminology. So terminology plays a huge role in the Palo Alto networks area. Uh, the basics will be very uh, you know, similar to the computer networks and, and all that, but yeah, terminology will be totally different. So, <clears throat> don't feel very you know awkward but yeah you have to just go through those terminologies over and over again so zone based firewall number one uh, is it is just like uh, let's say in our geographical area we do have some sort of zones okay let's say uh, we do have states under a state we do have district and all that similar sort of, sort of stuff it is like a kind of grouping okay so grouping of what grouping of your various physical interfaces over your firewall. So when I say this, let's say in my VM100, I do have seven interfaces, let's say six interfaces. Always there will be a management interface, first of all. Second one will be, there will be an interface that will be facing towards your ISP. It is normally called internet based in a you know interface or simply we also call it untrust zone 
why it is on trust definitely we will be going through just uh, starting then uh, next thing is we start with your actual interfaces this uh, it can be your uh, this isp interface let's say if we do have rj45 uh, four connections over there then uh, we will be having four interfaces so ethernet 1/1 one one, let's say this is you are using you are using for your internet isp's provider then comes your ethernet 1/2 this interface you are using for this lan purpose this is the this is your ethernet 1/2 this is your ethernet 1/1 one one. okay so next thing is uh, let's say ethernet 1/3 that you may use for some other purpose or let's say you have a server connected over here similarly ethernet 1/4 you can have any other device let's say you do have a tunnel ipsec tunnel over here it depends so you can uh, just uh, configure your firewall as per your own network requirement so now we do have two type of interfaces over here one is called your these interfaces these started with your ethernet 1/1 1/2 and all that this is called your data plane dp and your management interface that is called your management plane right so that means your palo alto firewall logically divided into two parts you can assume like this i have a palo alto firewall and inside that there is a logical division it will be behaving like i have one management plane and there is one data plane so again this is a matter of terminology only otherwise the interfaces you have already configured on your routers and switches also but there you did not see this terminology management plane and in the, your data plane so this is a new terminology over here but otherwise the working is exactly the same so another thing that you will be uh, learning over here now these four interfaces ethernet 1/123 all they will be even if you are configuring loopbacks your uh, you know vlans anything any logical physical or your uh, any sort of interface that you configure on your firewall there is a rule in palo alto firewall so they should map to any interface they should be mapping towards a particular zone let's say any zone zi any zone so this zone grouping you can do on your own whatever you want for example maximum in this case how many zones i can have now four interface they should be individually participating in the zones either you can have minimum you can have only single zone one zone you can uh, club your all interfaces ethernet 1/1 2 3 4 or case number 2 you can have zone 1 you can club one interface number 1 here or two or individually it's a matter of permutation and combination like how you divide so all i'm uh, interested to say is minimum there will be single zone maximum there will be zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 zone 4 where each interface is participating individually right and another one is there is one more rule for example this is my ethernet 1/2 ethernet 1/2 this is my ethernet 1/1 and let's say i do have a management port over here uh there i don't need to say it's ethernet 1/1 or 2 because it belongs to management plane so it is simply called management interface okay so the rule is every interface will be participating in a zone a zone can have for example zone 1 is having four interfaces but it is not allowed your ethernet 1/2 is also the part of zone 1 for example it is mapping to zone 1 also and zone 2 also so this is not allowed getting my point what i'm trying to say is each interface will be individually participating in a zone but not at the same time any in more than two zones 
clear? Yes, any question so far? It's not participating more than two zones or more than one zone? More than one zone, yeah. Okay. Not, not even two, because Ethernet one slash one will be, for example, we have, let's say this part, zone means grouping, how you will be grouping together. I say from Ethernet one slash two onwards, anything which is coming to your firewall, I say this is my LAN zone. And anything that is coming from internet and also including internet also, that is my WAN zone. So we have now two zones. If you want, you can uh, configure this ethernet one slash two also in WAN, that, that won't make any difference because just saying them it is coming in WAN, that won't make uh, purposefully like, okay, it will be forcefully going to the internet side, no. Zone means the naming convention, how you group your interfaces. It all depends upon the configuration. So now this LAN user will be coming under this zone. And also if let's say if you do have one interface that is ethernet one slash three, we do have ethernet one slash three over here. And I want to say this is my server zone or some, some it is also called DMZ. And then I can have the one more interface also. It depends upon how many network adopters you are actually configuring. So uh, that many interfaces will be there. Ethernet one slash four, that's a, it is my IPsec zone. So basically zone means uh, this identification of the connectivity toward it different. Is, yeah, we can say we are labeling them like uh, them, yeah and hmm. for example let's say this is our whole india we say this is uh, state one state two state three state four that's it yeah, but how many maximum zones we can create any rule for that one a condition for that one that maximum zones will be equal to your number of interfaces that you have actually configured Okay. Yeah, number of RJ45 connections will be equal to number of zones. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So that is just overall idea, like how the Palo Alto firewall actually, uh, they are different than others. Other thing is uh, this data plane, every data is whatever the live traffic you are generating, analyzing, or you are sniffing through your network, that will be coming under the category of data plane. So, this is a linked to management plane. Um, they are actually syncing with each other in very systematical order. So first, uh, what happened when we switch on any device, it gets booted up, right? So your firewall, basically, there is a booting also. So this booting will happen first with your management plane. And another thing is, I just want to mention, Every uh, Palo Alto firewall, let's say your routers, we do have operating system on there. Your, uh, your switches, we do have operating system on there. Similarly, your Palo Alto firewall, we do have operating system and we call it PanOS, Palo Alto Networks Operating System. So this PanOS version comes under in three um, uh, you know, sections. For example, I have 9.0.1. So this is the notation. The first major thing is called your nine is called your major release. Second one is called your minor release. And the last uh, part is called your maintenance. We will cover this in your PanOS upgradation process also, like how these notations will be treated. So now your PanOS, uh, this version, it is based upon the Linux uh, family actually. So there are three layers of your operating system. First one is actually root towards Linux operating system. And there is a, uh, you know, under Linux, if you may be knowing, there is a distribution of Linux. It is called CentOS. Then comes your third layer. It is called your PanOS. So this is like uh, the behave of your Palo Alto firewall. Whatever the commands that you will be learning on or you will be going through on CLI, they will be totally equal to your Linux environment.
so that is the reason we will, all the cli based commands will be based upon centos okay so your management plane when you actually switch on your firewall management plane so now data plane we have some sort of idea we have some interfaces on coming under your data plane this management plane why it is there and what it is responsible for for example when you access your router how many ways you can access your router SSH. Yeah, console cable is there, right? Yes, console and console is there, serial cable is there. Like it depends, like how we get the access of our device. Similarly, your management interface, it is like uh, uh, the difference between now firewall and your router is there is no such thing called an upper, a fixed IP that is provided to your router so that you can go to Google Chrome or any web browser. You can type your IP address of your router and you can get into the router. So this is different in firewall. In management interface, you do have one IP that is called your management IP. And this provides user accessibility to uh, to access your so that it can access your firewall similarly there are other ways we do have console based access where you will be using console cable to connect to the firewall with your pc and this management ip it is the user access uh, entry when your firewall is a vm based firewall hardware firewall obviously console cable is there then we do have USB based access is there on hardware firewall and uh, under USB, we have some sort of other two sub levels. We will be covering those. So the difference between management IP is now it is a special IP that is the entering point of your VM based firewall only and only VM based. And if you are having also your hardware firewall, you can use this management IP. But in hardware based firewall, you can use console and USB access also. So this management plane, it is responsible for accessing your firewall. Accessing your firewall, all type of access will be there. Second thing, it is responsible for all sort of configuration and validation um, of the, that configuration. For example, let's say um, we will be comparing your router and firewall all together so that you can um, find a base. For example, on your router, you have configured one static route. Similarly, let's say on your firewall also, you have configured one static route over here. So this static route, it is on our uh, router based configuration. There is no such thing called MPDP and all, but now in case of Linux, because it is based on the Linux environment also, in Linux operating systems, everything is validated by a special piece of software that is something called a process also. It is called daemon. So this daemon, it is a software process that actually validate or syntactically and semantically whether whatever you have done, it is correct or not. For example, let's say you have done, uh, uh, you have uh, entered a route that is just a network overlapping of your these interfaces so it won't allow when it won't allow you will be okay with the configuration you will be doing okay 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 all, all these configuration is just a, you know graphical user interface but when you will be after uh, in our router uh, when you save your configuration we do have two type of configuration one is called your running configuration another one is called your startup configuration right similarly in your firewall we do have also two type of configuration. We have running configuration. And another one is we called a candidate configuration. This candidate configuration is the con configuration that, for example, right now I'm doing some sort of uh, configuration on my firewall, but I haven't saved them yet. So that is unsaved configuration. OK, so save button of your firewall. It is terminologically just a bit different. It is called commit. So there is a button on your firewall. It, it is called commit. So this commit, after doing any sort of changes in your firewall's configuration, you have to commit those changes. 
so when this commit will be happen at the background so many things will be happening so first of all this commit process will be going through some phases phase 0 phase 1 and phase 2 so this phase 0 phase 1 phase 2 is nothing but calling upon all those demons so it is like uh, i have a team of eight members and i have done uh, they are sitting in a room so uh, they um, a network admin or the owner of the room comes and uh, they are doing some sort of changes in the room so those eight demons or those eight members they will come in turn by turn and they will validate okay this is okay this is okay so these are let's say these are the eight experts so one of them will be furniture expert then other one may be your wiring electrical uh, and electrician expert sort of that so these are the expert of the uh, configuration based stuff so now for example if you have added a static route for routing we do have a special daemon it is called route d so route d will come and say yes whatever the user has done the configuration it is syntactically good right you're good to go with this similarly let's say you have configured one ipsec tunnel on your firewall so there will be one daemon it is called tundi and because there are two phases, we have two different demons to manage those two phases, IKE manager. So these are two demons that will be validating. Okay, fine. So syntactically, it is good. Everything is manageable and uh, semantically also. So I mean like not syntactically, semantically should also be correctly done. So these will be the demon phase one, phase two, and these will be just validated by your all the demons, whether it is correctly done or not. So this is the whole process when we say this management plane is responsible for this whole thing when you hit commit your management plane is the one who will be actually calling all these demons and checking with them whether the configuration is right or not so that mean we say management plane is responsible for other than user access it is responsible for configuration management okay logging and reporting logging means what do we mean by a log log means it is a software file so for example route d it will be carrying a log between uh, for this it will be having all the entries like okay network admin one uh, did this network admin two did, did this or let's say network admin one only made many changes in the firewall with respect to routing so that will be carrying a very long file. It will be called as a log file. So every daemon's main role is to create those log files. So if you want to check those log, for example, if I want to check the log for routing right now, what is happening? Because ultimately Palo Alto firewalls means somebody would be approaching you just to sort of some, you know, uh, troubleshooting questions only so if cust uh, let's say you are facing sort of a customer and you are let's say or you are the network admin and somebody is approaching you say like hey my static router or my routing protocol is not working over here how to do and what to do over here so then first of all the first thing is you have to get the log file for route d so the you have to go to cli take the putty and take the management ip there get into your firewall then there's a command less mp log route d dot log so just a sort of this this is the command that you have to run it will give you a very long and some weird sort of look uh, file but that is the ultimate goal of you to understand that log also and to troubleshoot accordingly so that that's the whatever because everyone is here just to be prepared on the tag you know being a tag engineer only and one day so that is the job of main tag engineer how to read those logs every a very good tag engineer is very expert in reading these all logs okay so uh, that is all about management plane so data plane will be responsible for your all sort of um, you know uh, this routing your um, routing tables your uh, nattings, netting tables and all live traffic is there your interfaces configuration ip addressing everything will be coming on your data plane you won't do anything once you are into your firewall you won't touch your management plane at all that's it 
So, shall I clear the screen if it is okay? Uh, Ma'am, we'll get these notes or we have to make a note from our end? Uh, if you want, I can prepare those notes. But uh, normally what I do, I just uh, write everything on the screen. Then I do take some screenshots and I just forward to my engineers. This is what the normal thing is. But otherwise, if you want these notes and all that, we will surely be doing for you if you really need. Uh, yeah, if we get, uh, it will be better. Fine, fine. No issues. Yes, I'll prepare it. I'll prepare it. Thank you, sir. On the side, can we use one subnet for the management, like uh, for the servers, for other uh, firewalls? For suppose, if we have like um, uh, twenty branches, hmm. so can we use the same subnet for the management purpose, like slash twenty four or slash twenty? For manage for management purpose, you can use anything. It is like uh, you know you are. Uh, uh, you heard about the term. One is called DHCP client bound address so dhcp client bound addresses the main addresses that normally they are being used as for your management plane so they are the special ips basically and the default management ip it is the normal ip only 192.168.0.1 that is a default ip but if you have bought you know, a public IP, you can give it to you. Otherwise, there is no prerequisite for management IP selection. You can select anyone. No, but uh, I'm a little confused, you know, like uh, we have a network, I suppose we have like 20 branches. Hmm. So it's showing like there's only one subnet for the management only because the mm -hmm. same ne network and how we can assign, you know, the, the same subnet for the, all the, you know, devices. No, no, you, you can very well, it's, it's okay, it's uh, fine. Because I'll uh, see, even if you have one subnet, geographically, they are not uh, sitting together. And uh, this management will, IP will not be talking to any one of these data planes uh, until and unless they are guided through. So you can uh, use that subnet, it's okay. Okay, so we can use the same subnet, right? For all yeah. the like, devices. Yes, 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 yeah. Okay. Hmm. Is this the demo class or the direct class? Today is just a demo, <laughs> not starting with the actual stuff. So that uh, just a kind of motivation to all of you. Okay. I have, I have one doubt. Regarding the Linux, you know, the, the, the two uh, OS, the CentOS and PanOS. So uh, these two OS, uh, Sorry, somebody was speaking, and uh, I'm really sorry you are you were not uh, audible properly. Who was? I'm, uh, uh, I'm just asking. Hmm. Hello. Yes, yes, Rihan. I'm just asking both the OS at the same time. Yep. Yeah, please. Yeah. I'm just asking that both uh, iOS uh, will be installed at the same time in the device, the CentOS and PanOS. This PanOS, PanOS will. Uh, I I did not actually hear you properly, but I think you were asking this PanOS will be uh, already onboarded on them. Yeah, Pan and CentOS both. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, this PanOS, it is like a further division of your CentOS only, so it will come as it is. You don't need to worry at all. Okay, got it. Thank you. Hmm. Um, timing, this timing and duration. For timing and duration, uh, I think God of Sir will be. Yeah, there. so guys, uh, the, it's a weekend batch, Saturday, Sunday, and 11 to 2, that means 11 to, uh, I can say, 2 hours on every Saturday, Sunday, 2, 2.5 hours every uh, Saturday, Sunday, I can say, 5 hours in a week. How many pages? Two to two thirty. Two to thirty. Right? Uh, yeah, two, 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 two point five hours. It's okay. It's okay. Starting time was twelve. Y yes. No, sorry, eleven. 11 the time 11. we started okay. today. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Muhammad Anwar, you have raised. Um, hand. Do you have any yeah. question? Yeah, actually, like I was working in you know system side before, like uh, not in the networking field. Hmm. But, you know, my management, they told me that uh, there is like one site for the MPLS 
and mm-hmm. vendor, vendor has already you know installed the firewall and mm-hmm. now they told me that you have to just verify the configuration either mm-hmm. the configuration is correct or not so mm-hmm. how can i verify like there is a vpn ip and you know uh, like lane subnet to advertise and a lot of things are there so what is the best approach so is that the palo alto firewall oh uh, no that is 14.8 okay so i can uh, help you to just answer this question like uh, let's say every f- uh, firewall we do have something called a special file that will be having all type of configuration files inside it so in case of palo alto we call it tech support file and we do have special tools to read that tech support file because all our engineers uh, what they do they ask the customer to give us the tech support file and then they check what is the configuration or misconfiguration they have done so you can ask your uh, uh, whatever the client is or whatever they are so you ask them give me the configuration file then you go through it and you if you do have the uh, you know lab with you just repeat that configuration if you are okay with that okay thank you yeah. yeah normally this is the only case like you have to ask them the configuration file and or let's say in palo alto it will be tax support file and just replicate that topology with you that will be okay okay great yeah ma'am palo alto duration how many hours it will uh, means going to complete this is again question i would redirect to gorav sir <laughs> uh, i have a technical question okay uh, basically i want to deploy a one uh, vulnerability vulnerability devices that is honeypot sensor mm-hmm. right in mm-hmm. our network uh, with the uh, some public ip addresses how mm-hmm. do i bypass that particular uh, public ip addresses and uh, collect the log of all uh, vulnerabilities on that what is the tool you are using for that uh, uh, detection i am using a palo alto firewall okay palo alto firewall <clears throat> then palo alto firewall we do have uh, something uh, uh, engine called a ctd content and threat detection so there you will be having uh, your um, malware files configured you are filtering files configured there so it's actually, a- or- actually organization is deciding uh, mm-hmm. they will uh, put uh, honeypot sensor yeah behind the firewall so how can i uh, bypass the uh, public ip on the firewall and collect all the information regarding the the vulnerabilities and all in that case amit it will be okay if you can just send me the topologies diagram it will be easy to understand because uh, without understanding topology it will be challenging to give you the stuff Yeah, so, suppose suppose uh, we have a two internet connection that is wan side right mm-hmm. and uh, uh, we have a suppose to uh, one port is the like a dmj zone mm-hmm. and uh, third one is our uh, lan lan zone right mm-hmm. and uh, fourth one we decided a uh, honey port zone right and mm-hmm. deploy the port sensor on honey port zone right mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. now now this is this, this is our topology down mm-hmm. now okay so you are saying let's say uh, let me just clear this whole thing you are saying you have a firewall and uh, you have different different interfaces like this is your lan this is wan that is our management and this is let's say one sort of dmz and you do have some sort of malware detection over here yeah and it is your honey pot mm-hmm. yes exactly okay so you are asking like about the ip public ip public ip you can configure and configure on this port on public ip and collect yeah. all the information uh, all the information uh, about the wan ports like vulnerabilities and all yeah how then do collect, how to collect all the information on honey port so you want to filter the traffic through this interface either it is in incoming or outgoing whatever yeah, exactly for example even somebody is approaching this from inside like from here or from internet even if somebody coming here and here so everything should land over here only 
basically if uh, someone is coming from the outside to inside i hmm. want to, i want to record or i want to uh, yes you can say filter yeah not filter okay. exactly collect that information actually okay. he he wants to monitor the interface i think so want you the best idea i guess i can give you you have to configure your honey pot somewhere here internet facing towards because you see even if you have your pc over here if it, if it is lan or if it is your server zone whatever whenever they will be need yeah, you know that they need to go to internet anyway they will be going through your uh, wan port only so from no, here to here suppose this is a running environment we can't uh, modify the network so we 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 deploy only uh, on another port that is empty port right hmm hmm it's okay then then we have to redirect the traffic only say like for for example whenever they want to any person who is coming from lan and they want to go to wan first of all just go make a security policy for that security policy will be allowing your data from here to here if let's say you will be making a condition over here if honey pot is saying yes if there is a yes from honey pot side then only allow data from going from here to wan port that's it from here to here okay how okay okay and outside to inside yeah okay. so you need a security policy first for that you have to have security policy which will be between your lan and honey pot zone all the traffic will be handed over to honey pot uh, pot they with the after malware detection and uh, uh, instances detection they will be going to the out uh, port of your firewall okay thank you anything else yeah that's Are we, uh, covering panorama for uh, this course i guess panorama and gp won't be the part of this but uh, you can um, uh, gorav sir i guess uh, he he will be the best person to give you this whole uh, content uh, i guess they will be designing one template for for the whole course and we will be sharing with you so there you can have some idea so panorama and gp i guess uh, still it is not into the consideration but if the candidates will we will we'll see okay so can are you, we sorry sorry shagun can you speak little bit about the uh, certification let's say i mean okay okay yeah sure why not so we do have one certification for pc nsc okay so it is a palo alto certified network security engineer this is the one of the most demanding uh, uh, certification and this course says all about pc nsc only so this training will be focused on intensively on pc nsc so if you are qualifying this pc nsc so your palo alto tac life will be sort of um, fast track i mean uh, every engineer <clears throat> so far uh, i have gone through near about 15 to 20 batches of this pc nsc and all so every engineer who clear this pc nsc that pc nsc certified engineer they have near about 4.5 uh, times you know success rate than the others like for example we do have some levels first of all this palo alto people they will hire people for their ict branch then they will go for tst then they will go for tat and then they will go for tier 2 then they will go for tier 3 and also uh, there is a option always whether you want to go for tier 3 or you can be a team lead technical lead we see and then uh, we they also can go for and after that there is a something called platinum spot so platinum support people normally when they are doing really really good and if you have spent already 2 to 3 years between uh, you know with this progress rate Uh, your client or your palo alto from us only they would be hiring you from palo alto side only so for example let's say here we do have uh, companies like tcs is here they are hiring uh, people for palo alto right now so right now if you are hired from tcs side after 2 to 3 years uh, you will be the part of direct palo alto not from your tcs side so it is a very good certification so this certification would be getting you from you will not enter into ict so you will directly go to tst so after 2 to 5 uh, 
or six months, you can go to either TAT or uh, TA2, wherever you will be qualifying. So better you go for this qualification uh, certification. It's very helpful. And how challenging is this certification to clear and how this course is going to help us to clear this? This course, if you will be... And what, what are, and what are the contents you are going to deliver? So we will be covering through your every sort of configuration of your Palo Alto firewall. We will be, uh, let me just talk about some major topics of Palo Alto firewall. When we say firewall, uh, this Stata firewalls or Palo Alto firewalls, we have to cover hardware, various hardware and software architectures. No, different, different firewalls, like how many series model we do have, how many data planes are there, how they are different from one and another. Another one, then we will get into the configuration stuff. We will be talking about your uh, configuration of NAT policies, security policies. Okay. And uh, then we have your uh, packet flow, how the packet is actually traveling through. Then, uh, for example, let's say your Palo Alto firewall, we say it is a uh, mm, next generation firewall. So we do have some capabilities of next generation over here. It is called URL filtering. So URL filtering. In second, I, I sent a one PDF in the chat box. So this is the uh, course curriculum, guys, if in case you want to follow. Okay, yeah. Uh, hi, Shagun. Uh, yeah. So uh, can you suggest any best book to cover the all topics? Uh, and which is best for the PCNSA exam? We do have some books. Uh, we do have some, um, uh, it's a, from Palo Alto itself only, we do have some uh, guides. I'll share with you if you really want to go through. <coughs> but <clears throat> otherwise, uh, whatever the labs and uh, theory that we will be covering in the class, if you are very much okay with that, so I guess it will be covering your 90% of your PCNSC certification. PCNSC, believe me, people think like it's very difficult, but uh, if you are doing uh, your whole configuration on, let's say URL filtering, you will be doing high availability is there. HA, we normally call it HA. So uh, then uh, we do have uh, app ID detection. Then we do have SSL decryption. Then we do have IPsec conf tunnel configuration. <clears throat> Apart from this, the minute point that we have to focus on logs, how to create, how to generate those log files, how to read those log files, what is a tech support file, then how to uh, backing up your firewall. Okay, so these are the extra topics that you have to cover. I mean, not extra topic, but these are the very practical things. When once you are on floor, you, this is what you really, really need. And uh, then PCNSE, if you cover these all, it is uh, 70 to 80 percent of your firewall PCNSE. Uh, certification. So you will be having 75 questions given to you. 90 minutes will be there. And you have to clear at least um, out of those 75, you have to clear 60 questions, right? So it depends how, what is the response of your questions and answers. So every candidate who will be clearing that, so they will be marking as a pass. So that's all. Okay. Any question related to this content? So this is the content overall, and I'll be also opening this file. So how will we be taking this course as like enterprise level, Shagun, can you please explain? This will be just uh, for your, um, I believe uh, it is designed for the uh, TAC process. So it's like TAC engineering stuff. Security. Is this the basic level or advanced level? 
it is a basic to advance level for sure because it will cover everything rest of the things are just a pan okay i forgot to mention one more topic configuration management and pan os upgradation will be there so see there will be these are the various <clears throat> topics that you will be covering through layer 2 layer 3 we were at top sub interface external interfaces because it's like millions of operations you can do on your firewall <clears throat> this is high availability ip sec is here so uh, if i'm in the palo alto it is simply architecture of the shared architecture how it is palo alto so basically ah. it is a vendor it pro, uh, they are having the the firewalls they are actually supplying the firewall all over the world so just like cisco they are a company they are uh, one of the leaders nowadays they are on boom so gp i guess yeah gp is the part of your content It's SSL decryption is again there. Wildfire, we will be doing it. After um, this course, like, uh, will we will be doing uh, you know uh, configuration on the cloud side as well or no? Cloud side is never ever uh, you know including in your startup. So that means uh, when we say startup, you are the Palo Alto firewalls. This is not cloud at all. so okay mrityanjay you are asking me how much cost a pcnse exam that is near about 120 to 130 dollars usd dollars okay yeah how do we uh, use this class and this experience in cloud security cloud security first uh, uh cloud security cloud uh, my administration or networking related uh, networking cause there also vpn and uh, gay vpn gateways which will networks this there will be all... different this will be different than your cloud security i guess uh, cloud security you can uh, see every it is a starta only even uh, let's say in palo alto as i already mentioned we do have three domains okay one is called your starta next one is called your cortex XDR, third one is called your A focus. So this uh, starta is only about your firewall, and it is a prerequisite. If you want to go for XDR or A focus, so you have to have very good on first in starta. So minimum three years of experience is needed for uh, this is cloud only. Everything is based on cloud. So this is cloud security. okay so maybe it will be giving you some basics for your cloud security but for sure yeah uh, it is not till the end of your story if you are into cloud you your directions your routes are going towards xdr thing not on starta you should uh, keep on learning be very good on starta and after that there is one more training on uh, if you want to go for X, this xdr it will take up to 30 to 40 days uh, it's a very good uh, project or, i mean tool also xdr itself Uh, you are going, going, last uh, are going to cover uh, these three domains no 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 we will be only and only starta firewalls they come under uh, starta only okay 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 the... they need like different different domains for example we do have uh, software uh, engineers we do have network engineers we have uh, ai analytics so they are different different okay okay firewall uh, polo alto firewall has three the, these three domains not palo alto palo alto palo alto is having three domains for example palo alto is a company yes 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 understood understood so they have these three domains some people they are working on their firewalls some engineers they have their cloud engineers and some people are there they are working on their threat hunting so that is called ai based uh, uh, cloud security and uh, endpoint security so it's uh, a focus so you will be the part of startup this firewall training okay okay understood so after completing this course like we will be managing 20 30 branches right uh, is it uh, possible or no we have to do another course no 20 30 branches with palo alto firewall for sure yeah suppose hmm yes yes
not even 20 30 you can imagine even more than that because these fire firewalls are having a great capacity when it comes to packet uh, filtering and all you will be learning it and i know like in the starting we have some initial questions we are having some other innocent questions also but uh, it's a, it's a good start for everything okay yeah hello yes yes please uh, ma'am uh, nehal this side so uh, currently i'm doing ccnp and i'm new to firewall uh, so i'm not sure uh, do i need to prepare uh, for the next class i mean for what for ccnp no no for uh, firewall this palo alto i mean uh, you are doubtful whether you will be continuing with the firewall training or not No, no. I'll be continuing uh, with the firewall, but I'm asking: Do I need to prepare for uh, this Palo Alto before I join to the class next class? Yes, yeah, I'll I'll tell you now. We do have some sort of expectations, but otherwise it's perfectly all right. Because uh, for me, like uh, uh, I I do have some sort of engineers. They are not even from computer science background. They come from mechanical, civil engineering, and all that. So we treat them from the basics. so okay. we uh, yeah we will be um, it is a very happy um, i'll be very happy if you guys are very very good on tcp ip suit under tcp ip uh, my expectations are you should be knowing tcp flags at least then tcp states timers and uh, that's it and after that tcp header ip header and uh, then we do have um, ssl and ipsec basics if you know then well and good up to here these are the computer networking basics please go through it i'll tell you there is a very uh, very nice book i'll share with gorov sir maybe they'll or they'll share with you i'll suggest them and may we you do have some other resources also so up to here it's okay you have to uh, just go through the basics but ssl and ipsec these are some sort of heavy topics and also these are the prerequisite for your ss because see when we will be doing ssl decryption on palo alto firewall we will be doing forward proxy okay so this forward proxy you can only understand if you know the basic of ssl ssl means all about your certificates your cas your trust or uh, you know chain of trust so these things so but don't worry these topics whenever i start this ssl uh, forward proxy i always cover start from the basics only ssl basics similarly ipsec what is ipsec what, uh, what about in the phases phase 1 phase 2 from packet messages 1 to messages 9 all thing i'll cover in detail in my own way from basics this one but i would uh, believe you guys will be knowing these things on your own this thing i'll cover okay okay may he may ask about uh, lab uh, switches routers and firewall this topology configuration and all yeah we will be having lab definitely for palo alto firewall we will be working on our firewall we will be working on routers also switches also in meanwhile okay 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 yeah <clears throat> just like your uh, normal ccna or ccnp course we will be going through a lot believe me this is um, just a start of your learning of like how a firewall would work and if you are starting with palo alto itself only and uh, see within few weeks you will be learning this palo alto firewall after that you know normally in computer science we say if anyone knows c language na they can learn any other programming language in the world it will not be a difficult for the, for yes, them yes. similarly if you are starting with the palo alto firewall and you are learning the terminology over here and if you are going good there will be no firewall not even i would say uh, for your cloud security also you would definitely need to practice extra on the tools for example after that somebody was asking me on uh, xtr stuff so that xtr even if nobody is training you you will be very very good to learn on your own so it is like a base for every single thing in the cloud uh, i mean in the cyber security 
this is a good start but yes terminology will be totally different so hold your breath it will be a bit different yes yes and uh, one more thing if for the organization used to fight was asa or a fire power and uh, polo alto uh, we will be able to handle uh sorry i didn't understand the question if the organization where i was where i was working uh, the technendra is using uh, polo alto firewall as well as asa mm -hmm. when i was uh, able to handle those two firewalls uh, after this course uh, we will be able to handle you for sure why not why? definitely because see even you are having asa na there you also you have the same topic high availability is there ssl is there so this is what i'm saying if you are learning palo alto or if you are learning asa so asa it is a subset of palo alto's functions palo alto palo alto it is giving you millions of functions if you are learning palo alto somehow you would cover asa also it's very easy only some uh, graphical user interface would be uh, you know different of those two vendors colors may be changed but otherwise everything will be okay 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 fine fine thank you thank yeah. you so much Yeah. Hi, Shubham Pawan. This side. Yeah. Uh, hi. So, uh, I have two questions. First, so uh, I'm I'm totally new to this Palo Alto batch, and uh, so I will be expecting everything from the basics to advanced, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, okay. So, and second, I I'm I have done CCNA from networking, and so currently learning CCNP. Okay. So, um, Shubham, uh, in for this Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. basically i'm from non tech background i have done bco so mm -hmm. i just want to take your opinion like in future can i face any kind of difficulty after learning the palo alto applying job in the market uh, pavan right yes ma'am pavan uh, it's really nice being from a different background if you are having that guts to come across these all technologies uh you will be having only one very good um, outcome that is you will be doing very very well because you already know you don't have any other option because you have to learn it right second thing is yes so far um, in my batches there are people from not even boys girls also uh these girls are also from civil engineering mechanical engineering and they are doing much better than the computer science people because they put their extra effort into it anyhow they psychologically they will always think okay uh, this is not our domain we have to put some extra effort and that extra efforts actually bring them the very fruitful results don't yes, worry yes. be okay yeah you will be okay you will be very very well okay okay ma'am thank you yeah. yep so this this is it about your topics and then now let me just show you the idea what do we mean by uh, topics one by one first topic itself is just to knowing about the various hardware and uh, software architecture okay second topic itself is for example in an, any machine we do have some sort of called disk partition okay uh, sorry to interrupt you Mm -hmm. uh it, uh actually gaurav sen uh, shared one document pdf document yeah 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 i was going through yeah. that only hmm. you okay, okay fine then thank you yeah yeah okay thank you so this disk partition it will be covering your how your because see palo alto firewall it is nothing but a layer 3 starting a layer 3 device only right so every device they we do have a hard disk over there so this disk partition we have some very important folders okay so we do have some folders and they are responsible for different different things so for example one folder will be responsible for your configuration files configuration files so how many types of configuration do we have in palo alto firewall two types one is called your running configuration another one is called your candidate configuration okay so another folder which will be responsible it is for your logs all sort of logs all demons will be coming to this folder only and they will be depositing let's say they are going to a bank and they are depositing some sort of money so this folder will be responsible for all the logs from every individual demon this is called your 
pan logs folder and this folder it is over here i forgot to mention it is called your pan cfg folder okay then we do have for example whenever we will be doing your pan os upgradation what do we mean by pan os upgradation for example right now you are running on 9.000 and you want to go to 10.00 so that is pan os upgradation so there are two folders one is called pan repository it is called pan repo and we will be having another folders it is called sys root 0 and sys root 1 okay and next apart from that we do have so total we have covered five so far and apart from them we have a pan temp fo uh, folder and pan swap folder extra so seven folders are must for you to understand this we will cover in the disk partition topic and after disk partition we will be doing i'm not too sure whether i'll be doing following the same order or not sometime let's say from disk partition i would start any other topic but the topics will be that we will be going through that will be after that configuration management So configuration management, it is all about talking about your running configuration. So we will talk about your uh, this folder, pan CFG folder a lot. So this running configuration and candidate configuration, what is happening over here? Okay, so configuration management will be there. And if you want to take the backup of your firewall, that will be coming under the configuration operations over here. Another one, so this is basic topics. And apart from this, we will have another topics. So one of my favorite topic, it is your high availability. It is also called HA. So high availability means, uh, for example, in a ASA also we do have high availability uh, sort of stuff. If people who are working on multiple vendors at the same time, they can take the benefit from these topics. What is the concept of DR? We have like a high availability as well and DR as well. So how will we configuring? DR means what? Like disaster recovery maybe in the data center or somewhere else. Uh, in data center stuff, yeah. So this high availability setting a base for you for that also, for sure. Because you will be understanding like, okay, if you are taking backup, so this is high availability means just a backup purpose. So it is not just a backup of your file and all that. So high availability says, so now let's say I do have a company and uh, my company is growing day by day. And I have, uh, let's say my boundary or my perimetry devices, layer three devices, router or switches, not switch, router or firewall. They are getting bombarding with those all, uh, you know, packets. So now I'm thinking I should not rely on my single firewall. At least I should have one more firewall rather than having one firewall. I'll be having now two firewalls. But the difference is now this is my, I can have, uh, I can configure these two firewalls in such a way, either one of them will be working at a time or two of them, they both can work at the same time. Still, they will be providing a backup to one another. So that is two modes of high availability. We say these two modes are, one is called active passive. Another one is called active active. So active active means both firewalls are handling the traffic at the same time. And also, they are providing a backup also. So, but the understanding this high availability active passive is a very good start. So active passive means, for example, this is my active firewall. This is my passive firewall. And now these firewalls will be connecting to each other through some special links and now leave everything on this passive firewall now. So the, when, let's say same topology will be here, right? We do have LAN over here and we have some LAN user, let's say. I'm not drawing anything, but it, assume this side is the LAN. So this is my company's huge data is coming and but I do have one more firewall. So now the question is, do I have to these, you know, firewalls placing with 
next to next or can i just take one firewall and place another firewall can can one firewall be vm based and another firewall will be hardware based so these are the prerequisite stuff we will be going through these prerequisites of ha also okay so we do have some prerequisites it is not like you cannot uh, make any two firewalls to work as active passive or uh, it is called ha pair so any two firewalls cannot participate in ha pair just like that so they have to go through these prerequisites first they they must be eligible for that and uh, now uh, we will be going through this active passive and active active scenario uh, will be also there and uh, similarly high availability means one firewall which is my this active firewall it is handling the traffic all at a time passive firewall is just sitting quietly it is keeping an eye on the active firewall all the time whatever the uh, packets even a single small packet so they are actually uh, getting through to your passive firewall also so but your lan users they are thinking only one firewall is working so once your this firewall will be down so this firewall will automatically come up and there it will be a very short fraction of a second nobody would come to know whether this transition has happened or not i mean this failover something has occurred so the transition will be now going from active to passive now your data first let's say if this is my firewall and uh, let's draw that topology one more time this is my management and these are two special links that will be uh, dedicatedly connecting these two firewalls they are nothing to do with your other links and now let's say this is my ethernet 1/1 which is my uh, wan side and this is my server zone uh, you know interface so let me just name them this is ethernet 1/1 let's say and this is my internet stuff this is my lan stuff it is ethernet 1/2 lan and now what is happening first of all the traffic it is going like this so if there is a pc so i have a pc now the traffic is going like this from here to here and after that according to your security and nat policies it will go through now your data is going from here to here and out of your firewall so now high availability let's say your active firewall is down it will not go through similarly these configuration will be on your passive firewall also same management interface your these four interfaces will be exactly the same thing right so now your traffic is going to be like this from here it is going to first here connect with this from here it is going to from here to here now the traffic is going from the other firewall this is called your high availability so this is also called failover failover it is not a single step normally we say okay active firewall is down passive will be up so this is the process series of step will be followed by the two firewalls to actually um, get participated into ha so we will cover uh, in a deeper and a deeper level so i personally like this topic a lot so this is so suppose more... like uh, both routers are down then what is the solution Uh, both firewalls you are saying they That's are why i told like uh, we need to configure dr right for suppose in another location hmm. the traffic should be shifted from dr you know for suppose hmm. the buildings can be closed uh, like down or maybe you know the flood can come so hmm. in this scenario uh, like how will be the you know uh, solution like how it will work in physical disasters it's yes. like uh, nobody will be like uh, it is totally shut only but definitely we won't do anything in that case so in high availability we are saying like uh, there are some cases there that we actually particularly interested so we are saying we are not managing all sort of failures there are a subset of failures that we are saying they are legitimate cases if one of them case is occurred then only the failover would occur otherwise we are not treating all other cases so there are some special cases of failover for example management plane refuses to uh, boot <clears throat> or your management plane gets self crashed so <clears throat> these are the prerequisites that that's why we have to talk about your prerequisites also 
everything will be totally uh, in line like okay we know if this is happening then only fail over would occur in case of physical disaster yeah, because you know like i'm working in the isp you know uh, some of the customers they want you know dr <clears throat> so even they have a like uh, uh, like ha concept as well but they need dr link mm 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 that will be different than this then so that is like a data center oriented configuration that is different than this one so sometime you have to uh, in that case use for the cloud based solutions also for that okay hmm. because in physical disasters only the cloud would be uh, a safe point it will be escape point for you dr i think uh, may, majority of the dr configuration they are cloud based only Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, no problem. Hey, hey hi, Shivan. Hi. Uh, this is Rahul. So, uh, in this scenario, one is active and one is passive. So, mm -hmm. once the traffic is switched over from active to passive, so will mm -hmm. there be a black hole in the traffic where, when the switchover happens? No, no, no. It will be happened. Uh, uh, there are some timers associated with it. so we they called hold on timers and promotional hold on timers so the failover occurred in such a way like uh, lan users or the end users they won't even realize like there's a transition occurred so there will be yes but the traffic which is management uh, which is handled by your management plane there may be a slight dotted thing so there will be a slightly uh, you know delay otherwise from your data plane uh, nothing will be changed so uh, so in the data data plane let's say if my pc which has got an extra uh, uh, as uh, active router mm. so it will like once it gets failed it will instantly have the routing uh, mm. like routing details of the passive one as an extra yeah. yes 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 okay mm. okay yeah thank you and uh, after ha we will be slowly moving towards your other topics for example uh, then you have to check uh, netting is there basically it's a interesting topic is here netting is will be there we will be covering two type of netting one is source net another one is called your dnet okay so dnet what what scenario we need source net in what scenario we do need dnet it will be based upon your situation so let me draw one topology for source net this is my firewall again uh, the same links i'm going to draw this is my management internet facing this is my lan side for the time being we are just interested in this one only and i do have a pc over here and now let's say on my word uh, this pc i'm trying to open google.com www.google.com okay so now what will happen because uh, my pc address is let's say it is 172.16.0.1/24 and uh, this guy is connecting with ethernet 1/2 of firewall and that is having ip address of 172.16.0.2/24 okay so this one now that is working as the gateway for your pc and so which is the gateway this this guy let me just point it out this is the gateway this is the gateway for pc so now uh, when we are first of all you typed google.com packet is basically handed over to your gateway now when it is knocking the door of your data plane of your palo alto firewall so this firewall will be going through some packet flow basics they have to go through something is called six tuple information we will cover this in packet flow okay so they have to check what is this up this guy is up to what they are trying to reach so when they will be verifying each and every single thing is good to go like okay firewall is taking a decision okay i'll treat this packet then only this packet will be moved from here to here from your ethernet 1/2 to ethernet 1/1 
it will only be treated after that what is happening from here to here so this transition is called we were having in the land zone now packet is getting traveled to van zone so when one packet gets travel from zone a to zone b we have to have the security policy for that for sure the reason is all the zones by default on palo alto firewall their communication is denied that means if you will not have any security policy this user who is belonging to lan zone right now cannot send it firewall cannot uh, send its packet to ethernet 1/1 which is coming under your different zone wan zone so to allow this communication you have to have the security policy for that similarly what about inside zone that is called intra zone communication intra zone is by default allowed nothing to worry but this is by default denied inter zone is denied so that is the whole scenario over here so now the thing is let's say my pc is having 172.16.0.1 and they want to go to internet now we do have some rules on computer networks one uh, one is if you are going to internet and you are ip header is having source and destination any one is having private range ip range your isp simply would discard this packet that means when ethernet 1/2 will be receiving this packet it will simply discard this packet it will not process it further so packet will be like dropping so now to get this thing done because your pc is saying i do have this private ip please let me go to internet no your ethernet 1/1 won't allow it now for that what is the scenario this because this is isp facing ip so we can say this is also the ip given by your isp only that means this interface ethernet 1/1 it is also having a public ip let's assume this so now ethernet 1/1 we are giving one option whenever the packet is going from lan to wan i mean anyone is going towards internet from the lan side please do a natting so change their source address to ethernet 1/1 so this is called source net because you are only doing the natting over their source ip header not anything else so it is like a flow will be getting like this packet is here so now the packet will be reached to ethernet 1/ to from ethernet 1/2 to we are slowly moving towards ethernet 1/1 now your ip header will not be the source address will be different one so now the source address will be ethernet 1/1 of your firewall and the destination will be google.com's ip let's say g1 ip so that will be the process of called source net because you are only using source net only and i i have a question for all of you now what will happen when the traffic when the reply will come back to this what will happen here let's say I it will block okay this is our it is a we would require destination so we will be required the required destination map so we will 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 not that uh, ip with the real ip which is hosted in our dmz or inside the lan uh, yeah all of you are actually actually right and but when the question is when it comes to your palo alto firewall because there is a, we say these are the next generation firewall okay so there is a something called stateful device they follow the rules of stateful device stateful device means they remember the packets state so that means this translation whatever with has happened with respect to your source net it will be recorded over here so whenever the packet is going from here to here with the ethernet 1/1 ip there will be some sort of Uh, session ids associated with this so we called it c2s flow and also we do have in palo alto firewall only not in any other scenario c s to c flow we do have these two flows whenever you do any natting 
or security policy these two flows separately referred so now when the reply will be coming back to you this s to c flow will come into picture and it will say yes this data is actually belonging to me this netting has these two flows now within you so it will allow it even without netting so i'm saying when the traffic is generated from the pc and it is going towards internet you only need source net because a source net will behave like a bidirectional traffic but when let's say now if if it is clear then let me ask some uh, the next question if it is clear to all of you yeah so let's say now the situation is different okay okay now the situation is different somebody from the internet somebody from the internet they generated the traffic and now let's say they are looking forward to remote access of this pc problem is again same pc was sitting idle pc has no idea somebody is approaching towards him so now pc is having the uh, this 172.16.0.1 again the same problem this ip cannot be treated on internet because it is belonging to private range now traffic is generated from outside coming to inside what will happen source net will work here no uh, here we would require destination net exactly so that is the example of destination net so that means when data to uh, for source and destination net s net and d net that matters a lot from where your data actually got generated so data was generated from lan side so that means lan to wan means source net when the data is actually generated that not data sorry traffic traffic is generated from wan to lan side that is your dnet so that is the difference between them so now how the things will be done let me just remove this static net and dynamic net right no source net and destination net sorry just okay, let me okay, okay. write their names source net it is called s net okay then we do have destination net it is called your d net do not get confused with static and dynamic okay so now um, we do have some sort of scenario like this and now what will happen anyone any user from the internet they are trying to reach again we will say come to ethernet 1/1 here again we will be having a dnet policy without dnet policy the packet will be dropped now let's say you have a dnet policy it will allow you to reach this packet to directly your pc so just because of dnet policy this is allowed otherwise if you don't have dnet policy it will not be treated your firewall would simply drop the packet fine so this is your source net and dnet we will surely be going through this all and uh, this is one of the uh, very interesting lab that uh, most of the engineers because that that comes in the beginning uh, of the course so one of the very practical and interesting lab for everyone yes so, yes the difference between uh, source net and static net set so, okay let's say we do have nat let's talk about nat first root is thing is nat fine this nat means okay. we say we have uh, one ip it is called one to one mapping right yes one to one mapping starting up yes so that means no matter you have 10 lan user no matter you have 100 lan users you have to map them with the particular public ip only okay so now right. Yes. so that mapping can be done statically if you have 10 lan users that means you can have you must have 10, 10 public, public ip, IP. also so these public ip yes, you can say pc1 you have public ip 1 pc2 correct public ip public ip 2 similar two. you can go up to pc 10, 10 public ip 10 this is what you have designed the rule nobody will change them and they will follow this rule forever 
this is statically it is not okay. changeable okay whenever the traffic will be generated no matter pc1 is using or not this ip will be reserved by pc1 only public ip1 nobody else will be using this ip now next thing is we are saying dynamically dynamic let's say not dynamic so, so this dynamic is saying i have a pool yeah. okay i simply just have a group of uh, ips and now i'm just being a bit careless over here i say i have 10 ips whatever the ip is free please my system allow them whenever the traffic is coming just allow them one of those traffic uh, you know the randomly they will pick it up so this is the difference between statically and dynamically so it is just the way these ip mappings will be done it is not a type of nad it is a type of mapping is it statically done or dynamically done getting my point yes yes classification yes. of nat is two types of nat so if i have to say types of nat it is two types of nat one is what you are natting either you are using source at the same time at a single time or you are playing with the destination uh, address what something is actually getting changed source nat we have already now come across the example from pc to outside definitely your source will be getting changed and the mapping will be done to ethernet 1/1 slash but when the destination is changed that means now you everything is you only either, uh, either at a time you are source or you are a destination so imagine like this only it is like this is you okay uh, this is you this is your pc this pc at a time either it is generating the traffic or it is receiving the traffic so everything is with respect to your own local machine if it is generating the traffic source net if somebody is approaching it that means now you are the destination for that it's a destination net for that but anyway we need net for this because this pc is on private range that is the whole point yes okay yes yes this one got Thank you. Okay. So Shagun, I think uh, we can wrap up this session today and tomorrow we, another, uh, we have around one, 1.5 hour session. And hmm. from next Saturday, we'll continue with the proper classes and all, correct? Yes, uh, sir. People have asked some questions in the chat. No, no problem, you will take, take the question. That's, that's not the problem. Okay. Um, some of the questions are related to fee and stuff only. Sandeep is asking, uh, after paying, can the user request a refund if they do not wish to learn this course? No, guys. So this is the reason we guys are giving a demo. If in case you like the demo, of course you can. And uh, most of the people have already enrolled for this program. And uh, one thing I just want to tell you about networking, the kind of quality which we are delivering that is nobody's delivering in india and even outside india also the kind of lab we, we guys are providing so i don't think so there is any uh as such an issue where you have to ask for the refunds and all <clears throat> yeah okay after the completing these classes and uh, you uh, you're able to give the, the particular notes and uh, pdfs uh, videos right yeah so i'll tell you we guys are uh, for uh, we have our own application uh, on phone as well as on laptop so even if in case you you can sign up uh, you can log into the on your app and you will see all the video is there later to the uh, the classes and all notes is there everything is there in that in even separately we have a lab portal where whenever you want to do the practical 24 into 7 you can access okay how many days we will get this access for the lab you are getting around three months access there is no limitation like a, there are some uh, companies or something they are giving access for a 30 40 hours so there is no limitation on that three months where whenever you want to access you can because our client is not on india base we have a globally people okay okay after three months after three months if you want to take it you we have another option to buy only the lab also that is there on our website the pricing okay, okay to see the uh, to see this videos also yes yes and even what i'll do i'll i'll, I'll share the uh, the pricing details in the chat box so that you'll see and you can indulge there itself okay Okay. Uh, how how long will we be able to uh, see these uh, recorded videos? 
it's it's, it's uh, i'll tell you it's for a year and after the year also if you want to renew you can pay around triple uh, nine it's a thousand rupees but the benefit why you are in knowing if in case anything any content is changed you'll get the latest content Uh, know how the content will be changed for the recorded videos? I'll tell you. Content means, let's suppose I'll give you example. Uh, Cisco every year or after after every two three years they are changing their content. So if in case anything is new thing new topic is adding in that particular course, we are putting that course also in that. Hello, the sir. Topics. Yeah. Yeah, Vikram. Uh, what What is the availability of uh, recorded videos? One year. One year. Yeah, after a year also you can renew. You can renew for a uh, another one year. It's just a kind of subscription similar to Netflix. You can see throughout uh, even for next ten year also. So for that uh, we uh, we have to pay uh, some extra money. Yes. It's it's not the full fee that you have to pay. Just only the renewal cost. That's it. So hi everyone, Atul this side. Uh, hello, I'm audible. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, hi. So actually, I only created this policy like uh, for one year because what we believe, like Paul Alto, right now, Tenor is going to teach you Paul Alto version in ten, I think. Right? Uh, Shagun is ten going on right now? Yes, yes, yes. Sir. Yeah. So maybe next year when Shagun is taking batch with us, and if we are delivering Paul Alto eleven, so. At that time, like you can renew your video, and also we will give you the latest content. This is how we created. Because in technology, mostly like after six months, like in, even in if you go to CCNA, CCNP, so after every two three years, Cisco changes the content of CCNA, CCNP also, right? Yes, and also like our easy. videos, yeah, our videos we are not putting on YouTube. And then we are attaching the links in our portal. We are uploading videos on AWS S3, and where there is a cost to it to provide the CDN functionality to everyone, so that anywhere, like if student are from anywhere, they can watch videos without any delay or any problem. Additionally, we also transport AWS videos like within four pixels, like 480, 720, and 1080. So that is additional cost to us. So it means because we want to sustain, right? We we do not want to become the what we call the ed tech companies going on mm -hmm. right now. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So we do not want to ex uh, like have more expenses and less earning, right? Obviously, we need also little bandwidth so that we can keep improving our content. We can keep developing our mobile application labs and all. We want to. Our vision is to become like globally number one in training company. Already we are became India's number one networking cloud company, right? So if you see the content what we are delivering, so this is I have been into IT, okay, from last in eleven twelve years. I worked with Juniper Tech, I worked with Apple TCS also. I am the founding member of this company as well. So we started networking with the thought. that we will provide engineers because most of the training companies in india they are providing local trainers so in lo there is no problem with local trainers but we can't actually become what we really want to do like if we really want to go to like good level right if i want to achieve like 20 lakh salary 25 30 so we need that course content which will actually help candidates to go to that level and only the guys who are on that level can teach you and help you to become to reach that level okay so i am telling you all this story because uh, most of you don't know what is networking so uh, we have more than 2 lakh plus subscriber in youtube also okay and it's been like we are making we are creating content from the last 9 10 years i think most of you like i think 32 guys are here i think 15 16 guys are already knowing about networking yeah there are some yes sir yes sir yes sir and just to add uh, sure, some a bit more uh, guys uh, whatever the palo alto trainings that they will be delivering we are having 100% conversions so it is like all the people who are getting so far they are trained uh, they are already working in the major companies already so so there is no question And another thing is that this content change and all 
every configuration file every type of syntax every type of sometime of cli commands they get changed from pen of system. that's what the meaning of content change uh, can you confirm me which is the certification will be able to do after this course pcnse let me write that p n s e so uh, it's equivalent to uh, ccna no 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 it is uh, much more than ccna also it is a, a expert type of cyber security config uh, your certification it is belonging to cyber sec Okay, so guys, if you don't have any further questions, so we are uh, good to wrap up the whole session. If you want, so Gaurav sir, if you allow. Yeah, yeah, we can we can wrap up and uh, tomorrow, guys, the same time, eleven, eleven to around twelve uh, thirty, and then from next Saturday Sunday, there is a proper two two point five class. Hmm. Okay. Well, I have a doubt regarding H A. Yeah, Manima. You know. Uh, yeah. If uh, if the primary uh, oh, firewall, firewall. secondary firewall, yeah, having a IP address like pri primary as one ninety two one sixty eight at one dot one, and mm -hmm. secondary have a one dot two IP address. What if a uh, secondary gets a uh, fail? Uh, like uh, the failover takes place. No, will the primary IP address have one dot one of the management IP or one dot two like that? What if uh, secondary is uh, active and the uh, passive is get uh. a uh, get fail like that what will be will the ip address get from the management ip get swapped like that uh, manikandan uh, the question is regarding management ips after fail over right yeah yeah so, okay fail over there are some prerequisites management ips will never ever be changed on the same firewall they will be having different management ips and all configuration will be same with respect to your data plane that means ethernet 1/123 these things can be changed uh, same but not your management ip it it is not possible uh, okay i got it yeah uh, i just wanted to ask that uh, is there any prerequisite to uh, give this pcnse exam certification yeah those uh, things that i have written uh, be before few slides that tcp basics uh, ipsec basics ssl and these are the basic uh, building blocks to to start with your palo alto and pcnsc uh, no i mean to say that uh, do you have to clear some uh, certification before uh... no <laughs> pcnsc can be your first certification also okay yeah 